Tenemos el lujo de tener a Ibelina Dimoma con nosotros, es ingeniera, es ingeniera en, en Human Made, una de las agencias de WordPress más conocidas. Está desarrollado, se centra en el desarrollo backend y es una apasionada de los sistemas de control y versiones. Eh, le gusta el yoga, viajar y la fotografía y visita muchas WordCamps a lo largo del mundo. No, no voy a enrollarme más. Eh, un aplauso para Ibelina, por favor. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I barely understand what he said. <laughs> I mean, I studied Spanish in school, but I kind of forgot most of it. I uh, so, hi, I'm Eva. Um, I work for Human Made as WordPress engineer, and today I will try to share some of my experience with debugging WordPress websites. I'm still a bit uh, excited because I tried all these things in this museum, it's hilarious venue. <laughs> But that thing with the virtual reality is my worst nightmare ever. <laughs> so, uh, as you already know, I love traveling, I love WordPress community, I love taking pictures of sunsets, like thousands of them. I sometimes work like that, somewhere in a nice place with a view and my laptop, but that really doesn't work well with some new screen and so on. So, most of my day, I'm debugging websites. And let's talk about that. So, once upon a time, when I was a little kid, my grandfather was dealing with fixing cars. He was really good at that because he knew kind of how everything looks like, how to debug it, how to find the problem. But, that passed so many years, and the cars doesn't, don't really look like that anymore. The engines don't really look like that. Actually, there's a pretty good example in the museum for that as well. Uh, so, the engines kind of look like this now. And um, my grandfather doesn't really know how to do that anymore, because even if you know how the system looks like, and how it's supposed to work, it's, it's not like this every time. So, it's kind of something like this with the website. <coughs> even if you know how the structure is, how it's supposed to work, and what might be the problem, there are situations where we have no idea where to start. So, if you have a problem with, let's say, a legacy project that you haven't seen, and you need to debug it and find the issue, where are you supposed to start? First of all, never ever debug on production. You make a lot of little kittens all around the world set, and you won't sleep for days and different things like that. Uh, so, even if it's taking time, and it's somehow <coughs> frustrating from time to time, it's a good idea to spend some time and create your local environment. And in the best case scenario, you have like local environment, dev stage, dev and staging servers, and you have time and environments to test everything well. You can, after set your local environment, set some debug constants in your config file, so you'll be able to see the errors. You can, of course, set WP debug to true. You can get a WordPress debug log on your local instance. You can also display all these errors. And also, you can debug the CSS and JavaScript. This is very useful. From time to time, it will be able to show you the error even in the beginning of debugging. After you do that, and it it's not showing you what the problem is. You, what you can do is to start to know how the system works. Even if you know the basics of WordPress and how everything is set up, still you can be really surprised how many ways are to complete something that looks simple. Uh, so, first step is to check the system, how it works, how the project is done. Are all the plugins and WordPress updated? Sometimes, when you update everything, some of the projects will just magically disappear. Unfortunately, some of them will magically appear, but uh, that's a different story. <laughs> then, what you can do is, of course, to check the error log. So, if you're lucky and you have all the debugs on, you'll be able to see where the problem is. You'll see kind of something like this. Pay the web in whatever file, on whatever line, and you just go there, fix it, and everything will be fine. 
But unfortunately, in a lot of cases, what is happening is that you are getting something uh, invalid argument on whatever for each um, poor in PHP that you've never touched and not no one of your team touched. So there is problem somewhere, but you still don't know where that is. So uh, what happens then? You can check for plugging conflicts. I had a very interesting case with 64 gigabytes of work uh, by something like this. Just a plugin uh, downloaded was uh, introducing the same filter as the WordPress core, and it was printing error like that without any clue where exactly this is happening. So yeah, it nearly crashed my machine when I started the project properly. Uh, yeah, so you can just start disabling plugins and checking so you can at least know in which directory the problem is and then start debugging over there. Then if that's like kind of helping you already know where the problem is, but you still don't know the exact place, what you can do is start from the last known instance of that problem, like whatever it's a function name or even HTML tag or CSS class or something that you know about the problem <coughs> and just start grabbing the things around the code so you can follow the logic, what is calling what and how the things are structured so we can go to the uh, initial problem. What you can also do is use some of the previous PHP function like Vardom Banera Walk. They will be able to show you the output of the functions that, um, uh, of course, uh, you need to debug. And uh, you can see what is exactly happening in the code. Sometimes Vardom won't be able to show you uh, this because of some Ajax calls and so on. So every work is kind of more reliable for me. Uh, you have to keep in mind that it's looking for a string, so you need to print it if there is an object or a ray or something like this that you need to output. If that's like not helping yet, <laughs> you can use some debugging plugins like Curie Monitor, which is very useful for this. It is showing you very um, obvious how things work, which cure is coming from where, what is called, how much time it takes. If that's big enough, yeah, you'll be able to see that it shows what is called in which template, how much time does it take, and so on. So you'll be able to check all the errors. Yeah, also, you'll be able to see the performance of your code and if something needs to be fixed or it's too slow or it's calling the different template. And uh, if that's oh, not helping, or at least, of course, if you like it, you can try doing it with Xdebug. It's a very helpful tool for PHP debugging. I am not the hugest fan, but I also use it. Uh, it just needs to be installed with the devil package manager you are using for your system and configured. It can be also configured in your editor or IDE system that you use. I personally use Atom. I love it because it's fast and it has a lot of extensions for specific WordPress development and debugging. And the only thing that I need to do is change some configurations for the PHP configuration file and then add something like that in the editor, but there is uh, really good documentation for that so you'll be able to find uh, the exact configuration for your system. And then you can also use several tools like that for the browsers. And uh, that's the Xdebug extension for Chrome. It's also very logical and helps you debug the problems from there. I don't really use Firefox, but it says that that's the easiest debug tool for it. I don't trust it. Uh, so you can try these as well. And also how it looks after that. So you can go to where you know the problem is. Just put the debug point and it will start following the code until there. And 
in the best case scenario show you where there is. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan uh, just because in ATOM, at least the last time when I tried, there was no option to change the start of the debugging. It always starts from the beginning of the execution of the code, which is very slow for me. But it can be really, really useful in a lot of cases. Also, if you use WPCOI and you are writing uh, commands for WCOI custom, uh, things for it. You can uh, just make a small change in your bash profile and you'll be able to debug also WPCOI with text debug with just using WPD instead of WP. It's very useful if you are creating your custom WPCOI commands and you need to see where the problems are then. And then, if all that is not helping, there are so many cases related to these things called permissions. <laughs> so uh, I had cases where there is just random error in a file with, and all that set to here is not helping. And then you just realize that there is a wrong permission on a folder and the file can be called. So it's just taking a huge time for it. Another very, very useful thing. If you're lucky and you're working on a legacy project, you have a Git system, you have any actually version control system, I'm personally a big fan of Git, you'll be able to see what happened in the code. If you know when the problem started, you'll be able to check what happened in the history. And it's going to be really, really fast and easy to debug. Unfortunately, that's not usually the case. Uh, so it's a really good idea to just start and set up your uh, version control system when you start working on a particular project. There are very useful things about Git, like for example, you can try Git log. If you know uh, when the project started and there are some commits, you'll be able to see at least who did a change, why, when, and kind of you have idea where to look because you can look at the particular commit hash and then check what happened. There is other very useful thing called git blame. Uh, what it does is that you can uh, just give it a particular file and it will show you the file with all the changes happen on each line. So if you know where your book is, you'll be able to see who, when introduced it and so on. And of course, if there is commit message and anything related to version control, we'll be able to see why. <coughs> There's other thing that I love. It's called git bisect. Uh, so if you know uh, when a problem was introduced, you uh, can check the difference between the commit that is bad, where there is a bug, and a commit where it was good. So you can start, you can just tell it git by set start, and then you're telling git, git by set bad, is that that's the commit where the problem is, and git by set good, where it, the problem actually wasn't presented on your project. So then on every reward, uh, you can tell git if that's a bad or good state of your project, and when you finish, it will tell you exactly uh, at which state the problem was introduced. It's crazy useful, I just adore it. So, uh, that's about debugging like, odd things. And uh, when, what if you are just uh, wanting to um, introduce something new in a legacy project? You can just go down the code and check if you have um, filters and actions where you can add new features instead of just adding them uh, to plugins and uh, so on that you haven't developed. You can go down, you can check what uh, filters you have, where you can change functions, where you can add the functionality. Uh, also, you can remove functionality after you identify everything because from time to time uh, there is no option, for example, to remove a uh, functionality introduced by a plugin or team, but there is a way to uh, cook it from its place and introduce your change. 
you have to keep in mind that if you use remove filter, uh, you can't remove something that is not there. So it's supposed to go every time after the filter that you need to remove. It's kind of the same with uh, actions. And another very useful thing that can save you all that process, writing tests. So if you are very <laughs> lucky and the project that you're working has real tests, you can just go there and run the test and you'll see where the problem is without doing any of that. I am personally real fan of codeception. It's a really useful tool for testing. Mm -hmm. So you can use it for checking all the functionality from user perspective. It basically just goes in there and performs the same actions that your user is supposed to do. It's really easy to write tests on it. And uh, also it's able to work with Selenium server. So uh, you can also test JavaScript and everything is very interactive. You can see it how open the browser and performs all the actions and you'll be able to check where the errors are. So, all that said, there is a really good advice in the end of it. Uh, it it's a really good idea to standardize all that procedure. I'm a huge fan of automations. So, installing Git, making a real, really easy process to make local installs like um, really useful is to have the databases or uh, just install them with WPCOI. Uh, you can also use automation stuff like um, Jenkins to go and check the code. And there are so many tools that can help you with that. So it's a really good thing to have all that standardized. So when a new person is coming to your team or to your project, uh, he or she to be able to start very fast and not spending time on figuring out how everything worked, why it was done this way, and so on. And it's really, really good thing to write documentation. There are uh, very useful extensions for doc workers for most of the IDEs and editors. So we can install something like this and just write documentation for your functions, add wikis in GitHub or whatever is useful for your team, but just leave the other people some instructions how to handle the project, what the specifics are, why these things were done this way. Because as one of my favorite comments in Stack Overflow over says, uh, after three days or three months, you won't remember how did that work and why. So uh, it will help you and others to have really uh, detailed documentation of everything. And kind of, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Does uh, anybody have any questions for Evelina? Thank you, Evelina. You said you don't like uh, the XDBAR tool. Could you give us, please, some reasons why? Yeah, as I said, because in the editor that I really love to use, the extension for writing the book is not very useful for me. That's a specific case. Otherwise, I use it. But in the setup that I currently have, I just don't like it that much. That's okay. it. I it's a it personal thing, not. <laughs> I thought it was more about something on the timing execution or something like that. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's how the extension for item works, okay. not how exactly XDBook can be performed. Two different things. Okay. Yeah. I, sometimes I use uh, it's debug for uh, do the filing of PHP execution. Um, well, I, I don't know if you use it or there is any other tool to do that. Well, I kind of, for WordPress things, use Query Monitor because it shows like very obvious how much time is taking every query, where it comes, what is calling what, and so on. Uh, as I said, I'm personally not a huge fan of Xdebug, but that's my personal thing. <laughs> Any more questions? So, big applause for Italy.